We welcome you to Mass at St. Michael, the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson. Today we celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being offered for the people of St. Michael, the Archangel Parish. We have a few announcements. We would like to welcome everyone back. For our newcomers and visitors, if you would like more information about St. Michael the Archangel Parish, welcome packets are located at the greeters table. We are in need of volunteers to help sanitize after all masses, especially after the 8 a.m. mass. If you can help, we have a sign up at the greeters table, but be sure to stay within the guidelines for social distancing. Communion will be distributed at the end of Mass. Please take a seat after Mass, and the ushers will be directing you to the Eucharistic minister at one of the four stations. If you're wearing a mask, please remove it when you come up to receive Communion. During Communion, as you wait your turn, please be quiet and respectful for those around you who are still praying. We kindly ask that you wear a mask and bring your own hand sanitizer along with water bottles as the water fountains are closed. As we get ready to celebrate Mass, please turn off your cell phones and observe a moment of silence. Our Mass is also being offered for the conversion of Satanists who yesterday, today, and tomorrow are making a three-day event out of trying to go against the Catholic Church because of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, ending in the summer solstice, one of the most powerful days for the occult. So that's also one of our intentions today and tomorrow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brother, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we always revere and love your holy name, 
For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. For the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any mis misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O oh, Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See you, lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in the great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Lord, to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? 
Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You're with more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings remind us that no matter how in the dark, surrounded or outnumbered we feel in the face of evil, death, and sin, the Father will stand with us if we stand with him and his son. It comes down to us first. In today's first reading, Jeremiah describes his former friends conspiring against him, which means they weren't really friends, they were acquaintances. But also his confidence that the Lord is at his side and their scheming will ultimately fail. This is something we don't understand. We don't think of a lot. Jeremiah is not only talking about maybe failing in this life, but he's talking about failing ultimately in the next life. And so we have to remember there's always the next life. Jeremiah had the whole ruling class of Israel, almost all of them, against him because he was the Lord's prophet. And they didn't like what the Lord was trying to tell them through him. They wanted to hear, the king wanted to hear, yes, do it. The princes wanted to hear, yes, do it. And Jeremiah said, no, don't do it. And he didn't want to be here, they didn't want to hear no. So, you know, we can think like what Jeremiah said, imagine our friends want to seek our downfall more than a companionship, even when we have the, I, their best interests in mind. And what happens a lot, you know, we say, you know, I'm worried about you doing this because it's not good for you. And they get upset because of course they want to do it, but also we give them a guilty conscience. So these guys are watching Jeremiah as he's going through life. They're waiting for him to slip up. They want to say, fake news, fake news. And that is their mistake. Because if they kept their eyes on the Lord and not Jeremiah, they would have spared their fate. Instead, they suffered death and exile at the hands of their enemies, the Babylonians. And Jeremiah was vindicated. He went into exile because he was part of the people. So later on, he would really get upset about that. God, I did what you told me to do, and here I am in exile too. So sometimes we have that problem. In today's second reader, St. Paul reminds us that even though sin has a head start and plenty of time to spread, it is nothing compared to the grace that can flow from one man standing up to him, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Adam, the one man mentioned at the start of today's second reading, sin and death entered the world and spread to everyone whether we like it or not. Everywhere throughout human history, we see it even to today. Original sin has dire effects that rage unchecked in many ways. And no one has a problem seeing the evil plagues going on in the world today. It's become so bad that it's not even recognized as sin. We give it other names besides sin. So. Even back in the time of Moses, he shared the law that God wanted the people to have, the Ten Commandments, to show them how to turn away from sin and back to good again. But even with that law, the Ten Commandments, it doesn't matter. Sin still moves on and ravages the world because people are saying, no, I don't feel like it. I should be free. It's my right. So. Adam could never have made amends for all of his sin that's been going on since he listened to Eve and ate the apple. But God the Father did not leave him, or us as that matter, to our fate. He sent his son, who wiped away the sins of the world through baptism and brought the grace of God to us again. And he was able to be doing that because the other man, the other Adam, the new Adam, Jesus Christ, said yes to the Father and not no. 
In today's gospel, our Lord reminds the apostles that they need only to stand with him and not be afraid. What is the number one problem we have in the world today? Fear. Fear from every side. People don't want to say I'm afraid, but they do in various different ways that they're afraid. People are saying, it should be a law that everyone wears a mask. Well, how are you gonna enforce that? We can't even enforce speed limits in this state. How are we gonna wear masks? People are upset. Father, until you get the mask on everybody, I'm not coming to church. I don't know when I'll see you then, because I'm not a member of the police force. Bishop told me we can't turn away anybody. So if people want to make that decision, it's their decision. So if we stand with Christ, bodily death does not frighten us because like him, new life awaits us. The only fear we should have is spiritual death. As Jesus said, be afraid of the one that can send your soul into Gehenna. Gehenna is another word for hell. Be separated from the Father for eternity. That's the one we should be afraid of, is spiritual death, committing a mortal sin and dying with it on our souls. So we have trust in our Lord. It emboldens us. More than evil and disbelief of the world should intimidate us. God the Father is with us. Who can be afraid? That's what the song says, that's what the psalm says. We all have moments when we question whether the Lord knows what's really going on or not and where he is and what will happen to us. But Jesus Christ is the response to those doubts and questions. He comes to show us how precious we are in his eyes and the eyes of God. He's also our lifeline to the Father. You know, how to, who wants to be a millionaire? You can use your lifeline. We can use our lifeline over and over again. Jesus Christ. So St. Paul reminds us today that the grace we need comes from him and through him. And it not only sustains us in communion with him, but if we're in communion with Jesus and communion with the Father as well. We stand with God the Father by standing with Christ, just as we fall if we don't stand with him. Cardinal Joseph Van Juan, the Vietnamese Cardinal who spent 13 years in prison under the communists in Vietnam, used to say that it is one of the ever-present signs of the true church. And that sign is this. He used to say that the true church, founded by Jesus Christ, is one holy and persecuted. And we see that throughout the history of the church. The Catholic Church is the one being persecuted. St. Paul said in chapter 6 in, in Ephesians, For it is not against human powers that we have to struggle, but against the sovereignties and the powers who originate in the darkness of this world, the spiritual army of evil. This battle is real. The history of the church proves it over and again. The battle against evil is not just symbolic. Starting with the apostles themselves, we see every one of them died a martyr's death except St. John, who miraculously survived being boiled in oil. Can you imagine that? He was surviving that. Peter was crucified upside down in Rome because he wasn't worth being crucified like Jesus. James the Greater was beheaded in Jerusalem. St. Andrew was crucified on a cross in the shape of an X. St. Bartholomew was skinned alive and crucified in Armenia. St. Philip was stoned and crucified in Turkey. St. Thomas was speared to death in India. St. James the Lesser was hurled from the city walls of Jerusalem and beaten to death with stones and clubs. St. Jude, the good one, was shot to death by arrows in Persia while tied to a cross. St. Matthew was burned to death in Afghanistan. St. Simon the Zealot was sawed to pieces in the kingdom of Georgia. That is evil. That is the things of this world. And yet, how did they endure it? How they put up with it? They knew that they should not be afraid because that's this life. And they wanted to work for the life to come. The apostles are our older brothers in faith. They teach us that being a Christian is demanding. It takes courage. It stirs up opposition. 
They followed in Christ's footsteps, and they blazed a path for us to do it as well. But you know, we're all like school children. We prefer fun games to tough practices. We prefer recess to mathematics. And yet with Christ's help, we learn to give our own sufferings the meaning God wants them to have, to bear our crosses with love and help those around us do the same. You know, if we all helped each other with our crosses, it'd be a much lighter load. And all the saints agree, there's no greater joy on earth than bearing crosses with love. St. Teresa the Little Flower was the biggest one that said that. St. Benedict, I mean, oh man, they're not telling that. Pope Benedict, in his last encyclical, Saved in Hope, gave one small, simple way that can help us with this. He suggested reviving what is a common practice among Christians, offering up the small trials of each day, those little sufferings, pains, and inconveniences that jab at us all the time. We all experience them, from traffic jams and money worries, the thorns of daily life cricket us. But offering them up simply turns them into a prayer and makes us feel better because we are able to help in the salvation of ourselves and others. So we turn to our mind to Christ on the cross when we offer them up. Jesus, I'm a follower. I can be no different than you. And by offering them up, we take away all the negative that comes with that. And it's so much, when we offer up the small problems in our lives, the small pains, of course they don't define what small is, but when we offer that stuff up, it turns into a perfume, an incense that goes up to heaven. And it thrills God to no end for us to offer things up. It helps us sacrifice something and say, I'm offering this up for my friend. I'm offering this up for the healing of this person. We can do that. Or we can just say, oh, Lord, I'm offering them up. Spread the graces where you will. So we plug into God's plan of redemption by offering things up. So we doing this, we exercise the important Christian virtue of humility, faith, hope, and love for Christ. And exercising these virtues makes us grow in wisdom, grace, and holiness. So the sufferings we're enduring now, the irritations we're putting up with now, all the different things that are going with our situation now. It is a great time to offer them up. Just think of all the graces that can come to the world if we offer these things up instead of whining and complaining about them. Just think how much better the world would be after this is all over if we're offering them up. Because that's what these three days are going on with the Satanists. They're sacrificing and they're praying and they're offering things up to Satan so the church dies. The church goes downhill because it's already been weakened by no church, no sacraments, all the decisions of our bishops and our pope. So if we offer up our, our small inconveniences, we overcome with a much greater force the evil in this world is trying to get at us and at our church. One good thing to do this is too, when we come to Mass, like we are today, take all of our sufferings and put them on the altar and say, I put my sufferings on the altar so the bread and wine that becomes Jesus Christ, God can transform them into fountains of saving grace. So a small little exercises that bring tremendous grace and put our control back into our lives. Put positivity where there's been negativity and make us feel like we're actually contributing and doing something for the greater honor and glory of God in this world, so that evil will not triumph. God bless you.
I believe. The Lord listens to the needy. He is always ready with help that never fails. We have only to ask, so let us seek the compassion of the one who cherishes even the smallest sparrow. For the church which dispenses the abundant free gift of divine grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For nations enslaved by sinful systems of oppression and terror, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For men and women who are tormented by fear and worry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For men and women discerning the call to be priests or religious, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have come into the presence of our Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father of all creation, we commit our cause to you and praise you for caring for us in our need by giving us your own Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son. By his obedience we have been restored to those grace of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, all the angels and saints, 
We to give you thanks as an exaltation we are claiming. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself. From the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and fill his Holy Spirit may become one body and spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Especially most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Corona, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. In this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Servant Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family we have summoned before you. Your compassionate and merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, all are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind amends to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, and bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command of form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we are always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Okay, somebody reminded me that this weekend is Father's Day. I don't pay attention to those things. I don't have kids. So it's only right that we have a blessing for fathers, because if you don't, the mothers get really upset. <laughs> the fathers are, yeah, okay, whatever. I just want to let you know that uh, if you had an intention for your father, both either living or deceased, it's up here, and I've been offering the Mass for them as well, all weekend. So I would ask all fathers to please stand. Okay, I'm gonna have a U curve coming back to you, okay? All right. Dear Lord, bless every father and every grandfather with the best of your spiritual blessings today and tomorrow. Let him know he's not alone in the tasks you've given him to provide for and support those under his care. Show him how much you delight in his work and affirm the value of whatever you have given him to do well, this is a father or grandfather and is a child of yours. Confirm his worth daily so he has no reason to doubt whether he is loved in the eyes of his heavenly father. Create in him a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that he can count on you to help you lead and protect those dependent on him. Let him know that every unselfish act of love and encouragement he has offered has been a gift that you receive gladly. Show him how effective the prayers of a godly man really are, what a difference he has and can make to those around him, no matter how big or small the assignment. 
When challenging times push him beyond his limits, assure him that you can take him further into the realm of possible impossibility. Speak deep into his spirit the powerful words he longs to hear from you, that nothing can ever separate him from your love. Help him to grasp firmly the promises of your word, standing with faith in the things you declare are true. Reward him for his faithfulness, past, present, and future, assuring him that true success and satisfaction doesn't lie in his accomplishments or accolades, but in the steadfast, Christ-like character you are forming in him. Demonstrate to him your amazing grace and forgiveness as he seeks to love and to know you with all of his heart, soul, and mind. Release him from unwanted burdens of false guilt and bless him for his willingness to help to keep short accounts with you, forgiving both himself and others. Help him to see his children or grandchildren through your eyes, realizing that in your hands is the safest place they can ever be. Strengthen his confidence in the only one who can bring good out of any situation. Teach him how to meet the needs of his child's life or grandchildren's life that it was in his ability to do so, but help him to trust you for the rest. Push out any needless fears and grant to him godly wisdom and spiritual guidance to lead and direct those precious children in your path, knowing you must also release them into your hands with powerful love. Complete any healing of past hurts or regrets they may interfere with parenting or grandparenting his children. Build in him a sense of joy, humility, and playfulness that draws his family close. When plans don't develop as he hopes or dreams are not yet realized, open his eyes to see beyond this world to a greater joy that never disappoints and to a father who will never leave or abandon him or his loved ones. Do in a passionate faith, a persevering spirit, and a powerful testimony that overcomes any weakness or doubt as he wears the armor of God daily that you provided for him as a spiritual leader and child of God. Today on special days and for all the days of his life, fill him with the best of your blessings so that one day he will stand before you, hear your ultimate words of praise. Well done, my son, well done. And we ask this in union with St. Joseph, whom you entrusted with your son. We ask for generous blessings today and every day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. And now let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, Lord, the Lord, Lord, angel, defend Lord, us in battle. Be our protection Lord, against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cross into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus.